calling Sulu Lima. Over. Sulu Lima Ninja Orchids calling. Over. Welcome to this video. <laughs> Just a little bit of fun. When I see Zulu Lima as a name, I'm thinking, hey, that is radio call. Zulu Lima. Hi. I hope that you see this video and I hope that anybody who stumbled across this video will benefit from the update of my Tolumnias in Semi Hydro. To the day, on the 6th of May, two months ago, I transitioned my Tolumnia pomegranate into Semi Hydro because she didn't fit into my classic basket setup, which I would have much, much preferred. In the past, I have lost Tolumnias to Semi Hydro setup because all I did was plonk them into Lekka, literally plonk. Very technical name. It happens. I do get technical sometimes, but. <laughs> That didn't work. I just lost them because of rot at the base. Now, pretty much the golden rule is Tolumnias need to have a very quick wet dry cycle because of the fine roots and all the rotting that can occur at the base based on all the sheaths. There are many, many reasons why Tolumnias could rot in a very wet environment where their roots are constantly wet. However, seeing as my favorite setup did not work for this, XXXXXL size Tolumnia pomegranate, I had to think another way. I couldn't find a mini bird cage to simulate something similar as my baskets. And then I thought, this Tolumnia is vigorous enough. I am going to give Semi Hydro and Tolumnias as a setup another go because I have learned a lot since 2018 when I lost my first Tolumnias that I put into Semi Hydro and saved the rest because I took them out of Semi Hydro and put them on lava rock in very airy little baskets. Now, the reason I risked this is because she was big enough. She is not a single fan. There is enough energy for this orchid to recover in the event that she dumps all her roots and, of course, then has no fans or energy to back up what she needs to be doing next, i.e. new growths, which would then subsequently provide a new root system. That is why I took the risk again. But I also reduced any kind of too wet top layer around the base of the orchid. So pretty much she's lifted a little bit higher. The roots are in the pot, but the base is surrounded by grit, which has absolutely no water retention at all. And because of no water retention, it stops any wicking that the media that she is in to even get to the base. And I'm very happy to say that the new growth that she was growing, starting to grow when I took her out of the basket and put her into the setup, they have progressed beautifully, matured, and are actually in bloom. Imagine my surprise to see bloom spikes. It was a little bit of a feeling of, oh no, things are going horribly wrong in the pot and she is blooming now profusely on three spikes because she's under duress. Orchids, if they are stressed out, they will also start to bloom profusely because they know that they are dying and they want to make sure that they can secure their kind. Hence, lots of blooms. It's not always a good thing to get a lot of blooms, but just a lot of blooms are not an indicator as to if this is working or not, because clearly I'm also monitoring the base of the orchid. In the back, I've got a fan deteriorating. I am watching it closely. I have not cut off the yellow leaves because I want to make sure that I am seeing what I'm seeing and not assume immediately that it is rot. Now, the indicator that this fan in the back is dying off, starting at the base and yellowing and is still greenish, it's been a while, but greenish at the top of the leaves, it is possible the indicator of rot at the base of that growth. But I'm looking around the rest of the orchid and everything is looking fine. That fan is also a very, very old fan, so she may be losing the fan at the base because of rot has entered, but she's also losing the fan because it is an old fan. I am absolutely not worried about it at this stage, and I'm not going to cut into it because I don't see a reason to intervene, but at this stage, I can see that the rest of the fans are performing beautifully. They are hydrated. The older fans on the orchid that had all that gorgeous root system, those fans are not starting to wrinkle. So it is not as if the orchid is drawing energy into the new growths by using the growths that are in the back. Otherwise, 
we would get a wrinkling appearance of the leaves. So the root system that is existing is doing its job. And I have let her bloom because I believe this is working out great. The top is so dry, I am so tempted to water this orchid, but you can see that the roots are green. They are hydrating. So there is water in the pot. The top is super dry, but the roots are green. And that is exactly what I wanted because at this stage, you can see how much wind I've got. I would be going nuts with misting this orchid while the growths are small, which surprisingly would also induce rot, even though it should dry out quickly. But there is such a fine balance between rotting out a new growth of a tolumnia and the drying cycle. So I am so busy with my tolumnias in baskets, I cannot tell you. And I have to be so vigilant with where my water goes, even, even on dry, windy days like these. I don't have to worry about this one at all. It is doing fabulously. I am very, very happy. This is working for this time of year. Updates will, of course, follow on this one when it comes winter time. By that time, though, the new roots of the growth that I write here and in the back right there, they will be in the media. And I am 80% confident that we are going to be okay with Tolumnia pomegranate in semi-hydro based on the fact that the bases of the fans are not getting wet at all. Now, we have another candidate that had to go into semi-hydro, much to my chagrin, because it wouldn't fit back into its basket. Also because I was adamant about keeping the spikes. It was in full bloom at the time I was doing the transition. I was just, just adamant about keeping the spikes. I want the orchid to benefit from the energy that is in those spikes. And just because I was trying to fiddle my way back into a basket with this orchid, I wasn't going to just say, okay, I'll take off the spikes and we'll be done with it. In hindsight, I'm kind of regretting that I didn't just cut the spikes, but here we are. Now, this one is not in as highly water retentive media as this one is. There is more Akadama in here mixed with grit and then only the surface has grit. This is only lava rock. So the orchid came out of the basket with lava rock attached to the existing root system and went straight into a semi-hydro setup with small lava rock which then allows not wicking but water retention because of all the nooks and crannies and crevices and the irregular characteristic of lava rock will provide a very water retentive semi-hydro setup. So she is used to the media that she was potted up with except now it is continuously wet. I am so tempted to mist this orchid around the surface because because I'm seeing dry roots, but I've only just flushed this orchid this morning. So the pot is wet, but you see the dryness around the base of the orchid? Yeah, it's very tempting for me to stay away from this orchid with my sprayer. It is working. I am seeing new fans growing without the older fans shriveling up. The dried leaf tips, that was cold damage from earlier this spring. There was a couple of nights I was not expecting the temperatures to drop below 15 degrees Celsius and eh, they promptly went to 14 and 13 degrees and oh well, <laughs> oops. But anyway, the dry tips are not a reflection that the orchid is in trouble. It just doesn't look nice. The new growths are showing me that they are progressing. There's enough energy in that orchid to be able to do what she has to do. What I'm watching out now though is how is the hot, dry wind going to affect my new growths? Are they getting enough hydration or will they also be dying back, which is possible for the heat and the dryness to singe new leaves? That is something that I have to observe from here on in. However, the care has been a lot easier. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to go and put all my tolumnias into semi-hydro because, you know, space is an issue. They have to live indoors over the winter, especially at night. And I just don't want to be lugging out a heavy tray of individual semi-hydro pots that make everything so much heavier than my little lava rock basket. So it's not a trend that I'm going to have going throughout my entire tolumnia collection. But Zulu Lima, this is an update. It's working this time of year. When it comes to winter, I have a feeling we're gonna be okay. 
because everything is super dry at the top. I will not be watering these as much during the winter as I can my little baskets, but that is okay too because it makes me feel safer that they are going to be all right in the winter. I hope that I've covered all the ifs and buts, the possibilities and the confirmations where I see things are going along the lines that I like to see and that I'm 80% confident this is going to work for these two. As I mentioned, blooms can be a stress factor but in this case, they're just an added bonus that the orchid is doing absolutely fine. I hope that if you were waiting to do any transition for your Tolumnias to see this update and you feel encouraged to go for it now, then make sure you keep the base of your Tolumnias as dry as possible, no matter what happens in the pot itself keep the bases dry and you should be okay with tolumnias and semi-hydro knock on wood famous last words anything can happen but so far this is looking nice and i am very very relieved to say the least thank you for your request zulu lima and anybody else that watched this video i very much appreciate it have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though please that you stay safe take care bye